Girls of Bayside calendars, get them while they're hot! Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 teen show moments that wouldn't work today. Uh, she had dumps like a truck, 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 thighs like what, 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 baby move your butt, 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 uh, I think I'm singing again. For this list, we'll be looking at controversial and problematic moments from teen shows that would have never aired today. Any of these shock you? Make you cringe? Share with us in the comments. Number 10. Brooke Dates Mr. Chavez. One Tree Hill. What were you like in high school? Horny. Mostly for cheerleaders. When Brooke Davis tries her hand at online dating, she meets former model Nick Chavez and tells him she's a 23-year-old fashion designer. Following their date, Brooke runs into Nick again, this time as Mr. Chavez, her new English teacher. You want to take your seat? Tell me you know English teacher, Mr. Chavez. Nick? Peyton? Here. It was already bad that Brooke lied to Nick about her age, but the two agreed to continue the relationship even after her lie was uncovered. They keep their relationship a secret until Brooke discovers Nick cheating on her and breaks up with him. Well, I don't know who I hate more, Mr. Chavez. You for being a lying bastard, or me for believing your crap and betraying my friend. Teacher-student relationships in teen shows are always creepy, but it's frustrating to watch Mr. Chavez get away with his behavior with just a suspension and a few slaps. Number 9. Glee's Shooting Star Glee. Let's get started. The fourth season episode, Shooting Star, attempted to address a sensitive topic, but it was handled about as tactfully as the pun in the episode title. When gunshots are heard at McKinley High, the terrified students hide while attempting to contact loved ones. Start texting, tweeting, let everyone know what's going on, but don't tell me we're here, alright? Shooters have smartphones too. It's later revealed that Becky, a fan favorite character, brought her father's gun to school because she was scared of life after graduation and fired it accidentally. I was scared, coach, about graduating, be out in the world with no one to protect me. Honey, I told you, you will always have a place here. No. In the end, the episode said nothing substantial about the topic and felt like it was exploiting tragic real life events for shock value. I wanted to be prepared and protect myself. I need help. Number 8. Solving an Eating Disorder in an Evening Beverly Hills 90210 Kind of life, Andrea. The whole school knows. Not that they care. Amanda Pizer appears in only one episode of this series, but nonetheless undergoes a miraculous life transformation throughout her time on the show. Amanda is dealing with a very serious eating disorder and takes diet pills, causing her to be constantly angry and irritable. These are diet pills. Take too many of these and PMS starts to look like a vacation. She lashes out towards the other girls and treats them horribly until she tells them about her problem. Why are you doing this to yourself? Look, I, I'm just not lucky enough to be born as beautiful as you. Gotta work at it, all right? Somehow, Amanda is cured by the end of the episode through miraculous means, as her attitude changes completely and she is happily asking for huge helpings of junk food. Brenda, do you have any more of those chocolate cover cookies in the refrigerator? Yeah, I think there's a whole box left. Great. <laughs> hey, Donna. Yeah. Will you bring me a couple? Sure. On second thought, why don't you bring the whole box? This is completely insensitive and unrealistic, and it's not clear why this storyline was included at all, especially since Amanda was never seen again. Number 7. Anna's Storyline One Tree Hill Writers of One Tree Hill really fumbled this attempt at LGBTQ plus representation. After a caring character Anna misreads some signals from Peyton and kisses her, Anna's brother Felix writes a slur on Peyton's locker. I mean, could things get any worse? This ultimately leads to Anna returning to her old school, cutting her time on the show short. The way her sexuality was discussed also confused viewers. We can still be friends, right? I don't know if I can do that. Show creator Mark Schwann had Anna come out to her brother as gay because he felt the word was more taboo and therefore stronger for her. Instead, it obscured a distinct identity. Peyton isn't gay, Felix. I am. 
Having a bisexual character like Anna on a major teen series could have been revolutionary at the time, but the series shied away from her character instead of delving deeper. Number 6. Marley's Eating Disorder Glee. Never in the history of show choir competitions has anyone ever fainted. Glee's treatment of Marley's eating disorder wasn't just disappointing, it was downright shocking. Kitty gave Marley serious self-esteem issues by taunting her, secretly altering her costume and encouraging her to throw up, but faced absolutely no consequences. If anything, Marley was the most punished when she passed out due to malnourishment during sectionals and was made to feel guilty for it by the rest of the Glee Club. The cherry on top though was Ryder's attempt at helping her by saying that he doesn't want to kiss someone with puke breath. I would never use laxatives. Well, I don't want to kiss a girl who's got puke on her breath. Yikes. It's insane this storyline ever made it to a final draft, and it certainly wouldn't happen today. Number 5. Spike's Controversial Scene and Redemption Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> Trust is for old marrieds, Buffy. Great love is wild and passionate and dangerous. It burns and consumes. In likely the most controversial episode of this Supernatural teen series, a disturbing and difficult to watch scene features Spike attempting to force himself onto Buffy. This event became the catalyst for Spike to reconsider his life choices and set out onto a path of becoming a better person. Buffy, Buffy. Spike, no, oh, I'm hurt. The scene was especially terrifying because it lacked most of the supernatural elements the series usually showcased. Spike demonstrated a real human evil, and Buffy seemed more vulnerable than she ever had before. This moment is controversial for good reason, and has only become more problematic since it first aired, especially since many viewers had a problem with how Spike was redeemed in the end, despite his truly evil actions. Ask me again why I could never love you. Buffy, my god, I didn't- Because I stopped you! Number 4. Chuck's Violent Tendencies Gossip Girl What are you doing here? I need to ask you something. Get out of here! Although Chuck's time as Gossip Girl's first antagonist was short-lived, in the age of streaming and binge-watching, it's hard to separate his first impression from his later appearances, especially when some violent patterns continue to emerge. It's not me who's disrespecting these fine people, it's you! Pretending you're going to marry this French phony, it's a joke. In season 4, Chuck's temper got the best of him when he jealously smashed a window above Blair's head, causing the glass to break and cut her face. Mine, Blair. Stop it, Chuck! I said it's over. Ah! Even though he technically didn't hit Blair, this is still obviously abusive behaviour, and it's appalling that they both reconciled just a few episodes after this shocking moment. Number 3. Almost Everything Mr. Schuster Said and Did Glee There are very few teen show characters as controversial as Glee's Mr. Shoe, and it's amazing the writers got away with some of this stuff. You want to tell me how long you've had a drug problem? I don't even know who the chronic lady is. Look, if we're up to me, we wouldn't have mandatory bi-weekly afternoon locker checks. But I've never seen that before, Mr. Shu, I swear. It's not mine. Straight off the bat, he blackmailed Finn into joining the Glee Club by planting drugs in his locker and was a completely incompetent Spanish teacher and promoted racial stereotypes. Hey! Ya no puede caminar porque le falta, porque le falta. He also encouraged his students to perform songs like Blurred Lines and to put on a production of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, both of which were completely inappropriate for high school students, no matter how old the actors playing them looked. Isn't that the whole point of the arts? Pushing boundaries? Doing things people say you can't do for the sake of self-expression? We could go on forever, but there's just way too many shocking Mr. Shoe moments to list in this video. Because you're all minorities. You're in the Glee Club. Number 2. The Girls of Bayside Calendar – Saved by the Bell Even though growing up, many of us idolised Zach Morris, looking back, he was really a total creep. The school store will be the only place where you can get your very own Girls of Bayside Calendar. And while they're buying that, 
go buy other things. One of his most disturbing moments came when he convinced Screech to take photos of the girls swim team so he could make a Girls of Bayside calendar to sell in the student store. Girls of Bayside calendars, get them while they're hot. The outraged girls report Zack's behavior to the principal who reprimands Zack. Interestingly, streaming platforms with Saved by the Bell cut out an even more shocking moment from this scene, in which Principal Belding initially commends Zack for his clever business idea. Zack, it was a good idea to get business, but you had no right to do this. This calendar is exploitive and cheap. Hey, it's not cheap. It's five bucks. This cut dialogue definitely indicates that the events of this episode would not and absolutely should not work today. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Aria and Ezra's relationship, Pretty Little Liars. I'd like to know more about you. Yeah, I'd like to know more about you too. One of the most overly romanticized and truly disturbing examples of an inappropriate teacher-student relationship is between Pretty Little Liars characters Aria and Ezra. Much like Mr. Chavez and Brooke on One Tree Hill, Ezra meets Aria in a bar, only to discover the next day that she is one of his high school English students. Holy crap. The two begin a secretive relationship that lasts on and off for the duration of the series, eventually ending with the couple marrying. Their relationship was definitely not portrayed as the illegal and uncomfortable situation that it would be in reality. This is especially problematic considering the audience of this series was mostly teens and tweens who should not be seeing this kind of dangerous misrepresentation. Yeah. I, I could get used to this. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.